Howdy, y'all, and welcome back. Forgive my moist appearance. It's disgusting outside. <laughs> it's middle of August, and we're pushing a little over 100 today, and that puts it probably about 110 in this garage right now. So, slings. Today, we're going to be looking at four different slings and comparing the design, the materials, and function. So, we'll go to the tabletop, discuss uh, material thickness, and design layout, some pros and cons. Then I will strap each one onto this rifle, uh, pistol, excuse me, and they'll all be hooked up the same way, QD on the back with a Blue Force Gear U-loop on the front. So they'll all be, we're comparing apples to apples as far as attachment points. And I do have a loaded mag here to kind of give me a better idea of how a real rifle is gonna feel hanging on my body. And uh, so let's take it over to the tabletop. All right, so right away, let's point out the obvious that two of these are padded slings and two are non-padded slings. And it's worth noting that the construction, the design of the Vickers uh, Blue Force padded sling is different than the non-padded sling. So I only have this one here to show you. Uh, I wish I had the padded version so that I could show how it compares to these two padded slings, but I don't, so this is what we're working with. But right away, the thing that separates the Blue Force Gear Vickers sling from the other three is the webbing itself. And this is a substantially heavier nylon than... Let's see if I can get this to come up on camera, but let's compare a single piece of the webbing and you can see right there that it is any of you older uh, former service members like myself this is much more similar to the material that our old a1 and a2 slings were made out of and that thickness just rides a little more comfortable across your shoulders than the thinner slimmer webbing the argument for using the lighter, thinner webbing on modern slings is that it is lighter and that it glides across the, the, bo the body better. I, whether that, I don't really know that I find that to be the case. But anyway, I think that gives you a pretty good example. And this thickness is very similar to the Lunar Concepts which is also very similar in thickness to the old Viking. So these in width and thickness are all pretty similar. And then again, the Vickers sling is just a skosh. They're all listed as one inch, but this is actually just a hair over an inch. And these are, they measure, to me anyway, just like a tiny hair under. So take that for what it's worth. And that sort of gives you an idea of how they compare side by side. These three are all pretty darn similar with the Vickers being the standout. All right, so now let's look at the ends. And this is something that I wouldn't have thought would be such a critical component of sling design until I acquired the Edgar Sherman sling. And something that it does really jumped out as being superior to the others. And that is this little bit of flap right there. And what that does is as it comes back, if it were to ever try to slide out of the tri-glide, it catches on itself. And it's just, it's one of those things, it's super subtle, but really helpful. And I don't know if that was so much deliberate design or just a happy coincidence or what, but I like it a lot. Also, I'm a small dude, so I have to take a sling in a lot. And on both 
the Blue Force Gear Vickers and the Edgar Sherman slings, I did not have to cut any material away to make it sized down for myself. On the Lunar Concept sling, you'll notice here I have cut th this end and I cut some material off of that end. Both of these, there was so much excess that it was just bizarre. It was ridiculous. So I cut some of that away. Now, if I wanted to hand it off to someone much larger than myself, that's problematic. That is not the case. Now, the ends on the Blue Force sling are just sort of cut and then melted, which is fine. Uh, and this one you can see, so as the end comes around, there's your loop for attachment. And then I just double this back, way back on itself. And then there's my other factory end right there. And likewise with the Viking, I've cut off and then just melted myself there. A little bit of that end. And then on the back end, or the front end, rather, you can see I've done the same. So I cannot stand having a whole lot of flappy excess past the point of attachment. So this one and the Vickers both allow me to get it drawn in nice and tight on myself without having a whole bunch of excess flappy, 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 flappy. All right, so the Viking tactic sling. As I mentioned, we've got tails. Even after cutting these off, and I've cut quite a few inches off of each end, and I've still got tails. It's not the end of the world, but the way I have to cinch this up, I've got the triglide basically all the way back up to the padded part, so I can't bring it up any farther. And that leaves me with some tail. I mean, I could cut that a little more, but then, man, you've got no adjustment. So I left a little, uh, likewise, on the other end. But as far as comfort, feels great. Slings in, works, the padding is nice. Uh, as I mentioned, you've got two separate, and you want to not confuse this flappy piece with this flappy piece, but to bring it out, I have to come up and find that guy and kind of pull like so and that will let me have some room and then to bring it back in I get that flappy guy and bring it back in not the end of the world it's just an older design it's a little antiquated now but the material the construction everything about these these are rock solid they are combat proven they've been to the fair and seen the bear so I'm not going to knock it it's just not my favorite. All right, so the Vickers non-padded sling. Important to delineate it from its padded sister because the design is very different. Being non-padded allows all of this back end to be folded back over itself, like so. I hope that shows up on camera. And so I didn't have to cut this in any way to get it to conform to my rather smaller frame. Got the substantial grabby handle there, and it's just easy. It's just, you just, boom, it's in the down position when it's cinched in tight, and to open it up, you just pull, <laughs> and you've got some extra room. So it does probably, of these four, the, it's not so much pulling out, the bringing it back in is a little more restrictive. It has a little more resistance force as you're pulling it back in, but you're going to be pulling in, in your downtime. You want it to be able to open up quickly, if that makes sense. If you need to deploy and get movement, you're going to want that quickly. And it does give you that. So... If you need to swim out or whatever, you, you need that, you need it to be able to open quickly. 
yeah, it's got a little more drag bringing it back in, but that's not a big deal. So love the construction. I like this sling a lot, a lot, lot, lot. All right, the Lunar Concepts Contour Sling. So as the name indicates, it has a contour shaped into the padded portion, which does fit pretty nicely around a person's shoulders. This end, I did lop some off, but it has a convenient little pocket right there in the padded portion, and you can tuck the excess up in there. So it, it, that's nice. It, it doesn't, I don't have any shit dangling over here messing with my peripheral vision. On the bottom end, I do have a little bit of, little bit of flat, but it's not too bad. And then again, we have this really cool grab handle design where it's got the little kind of bi-glide, little plastic doohickey so, like stitched into it, which keeps it perpendicular to the webbing. And so it's just super easy. You reach down, it's there, you find it, boom. Now this one, man, it opens up nice, like super, super nice. It also closes very, very nice. Very slick, quick. I like it a lot. Uh, lots of good stuff going on with the Lunar Concept Sling. If I had to hang off of the side of a mountain, I'd probably still rather have that Vickers. <laughs> but it's tough. It's really well thought out. It's well designed. And maybe the one downside would be... So see how it... I don't know if you can see this compared to the previous two... This gives me a lot of adjustment, which lets me bring the rifle out farther, almost more like a, a single point kind of sling. The downside being if I transition shoulders because of the padding right here, it gets a little choky, not terrible, but if I were a bigger dude, I think it would be more noticeable uh, that this padded section would be now coming across into my neck. It's not the end of the world, it works. It's just, it's a design, you know, it's a trade-off. You, you've got padding. So if you're carrying, if you're humping miles and miles all day and you've got a heavy rifle, that padding is going to feel good. If you're trying to be zippy fast and transitioning shoulders may not be the best option. So compromises, just like everything in the firearms world. <laughs> All right, and that brings us back to the Edgar Sherman Design Sling. Of these four, it is definitely the thinnest across my back and shoulder. If I was humping a long, long distance, it might not be my first choice. But for anything close and personal, probably my favorite pick. Reason being the grab handle and the amount of adjustability it gives you in one pull. So I've got it really cinched up and tight on my body so that if I sling in, I have a lot of counter leverage and it pulls and I am snugged in there real tight. But if I open it up because I need to transition, I've got a ton of adjustability and that's, that's even running a QD on the outboard side. So if I wanted even more adjustability, I could use some 550 cord, loop it down under the bottom, let it cross over the top or under the bottom, and have even more adjustability. So, again, I can always reach up. It's a little awkward, but I can always reach up, find that grab handle. Definitely the winningest grab handle design, uh, and it probably gives the most transition, the most glide back and forth. Any padded sling is going to limit you because you're going to come back and then when you hit the padded section, it's going to stop. So, and likewise, you don't get as much adjustability because that padded section, the triglides can't go over it. So this one and the Vickers definitely win in that category. So I really prefer probably of these four, the Vickers and the Edgar Sherman. I like this one so much, I'm going to give it away. <laughs> so this will be included for all patrons at the end of August giveaway. So coming up in about two weeks.
So someone, I figured this is a good option. Uh, if you have like an old Millsurp rifle, if you have some kind of FUD gun you want to put it on, it's black, it's subtle, low key. So it's a good one to give away. And somebody will get it. It has been to the range like three times. So it's in pretty darn good shape. Not brand new, but pretty good shape. Anyway, thanks y'all for watching. I appreciate you all so much. And until next time, be easy, y'all.